Hey guys, so quick little disclaimer here, post-recording. I recorded before the news broke of all these injuries. As I tweeted on, I said, you know, prayers out to all these uh, injured players because this is just a freak incident. I can't remember anything like this. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to put that in there. Enjoy the video. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Jason. Welcome to my third roster review of the 2021 CFL season with a look into the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And this is a very interesting team to talk about. I'm just really excited to get going with today's video. But really quickly before we get started, if you want to support the show, the best way to do it is by hitting that like button. It really helps me out. And subscribing to Hussey's Huddle for more CFL content just like this one. And with that said, let's get into today's video. So first we're gonna talk about our positional rankings, where every team ranks in the CFL, one to nine in every positional group here for the Rough Riders. And then we're gonna go over our projected starters slash ratio possibilities, where this team is gonna start their Canadians possibly in 2021. And then I'll go into my team award predictions, most outstanding player, etc finally i'll go over my final thoughts and i didn't mention in the last video that but i did mention in the first video that there are timestamps in the description i'll also try to drop them in the comment section going forward just so it's more visible for people to skip to the part of the video that they want to see now without further ado the first reveal of where this team ranks in terms of the positional rankings the quarterback position and before Saskatchewan Rough Riders fans freak out at me, this was a very tough decision. Trying to rank the quarterbacks in the CFL right now, very, very tough. Don't get me wrong, if Cody Fajardo replicates what he did in 2019, he will be a top three quarterback, top two quarterback in the CFL in my eyes. He has endless potential as that number one quarterback for the Rough Riders. But the fact that that was his first season in the league uh, as a starter in 2019, I just need to see it again, really. That's the big thing, but Fajardo really gives you everything you need. Uh, he has the size, he has the mobility, really good uh, in terms of the scrambler. Uh, he has a great arm, one of the best arms at the CFL level that we've seen today. Just an overall great leader. I love his personality. I think he's just a great leader for the Rough Rider community, and he's a potential face of the CFL going forward. Backing him up though, when you look at these backups, there's nobody that really has that CFL experience that has started uh, CFL games on a consistent basis, or even really has started many CFL games at all. So Isaac Harker is the most notable of these backups. He's a guy that saw some action in 2019 when Zach Kolaris originally went down to injury, but then, you know, Fajardo kind of took over the show there in Saskatchewan. They bring in Tom Flacco, who is the brother of Joe Flacco, who was the quarterback in the NFL for a long time, is still a backup, I believe. Flacco is a guy that went to three different colleges, went to West Michigan, Rutgers, and Towson. He also played baseball and was twice a finalist for the Walter Payton Award in college football. Paxton Lynch is a guy that doesn't need much introduction as a former NFL draft bust who was a first round pick of the Denver Broncos in 2016. He's a big frame guy, has a big arm, but he never really seized the control of a starting job at any point during his time with Denver, which is really disappointing for a first round pick in the NFL. But he comes up to the CFL, fresh slate, let's see what he can do. And then you got Mason Fine, a guy in one of my other videos commented and said that I better take a look at this guy because he's overcome obstacles at every level that he's played at. Uh, he was from the University of North Texas and threw for the 28th most yards in college football history at the time of him turning pro. So very accomplished at the college football level. Maybe a guy that slipped through the cracks of the NFL. We'll see how he does going forward, but really interesting group of quarterbacks that the Rough Riders are bringing to camp behind Fajardo, but not a lot of guys that have shown a lot on the field as of recently. But overall, Fajardo really brings up this unit in the CFL going into 2021. For running backs, they're going to rank third. And this is a position just like quarterback where it's heavily weighted if you have one very, very 
good player at that position and William Powell is that player for this team. Powell is just one of the best all-around running backs in the CFL. He has just a combination of skill sets. He can catch the ball out of the backfield but he's also has a good combination of power and quickness just really good overall running back and he's proven it year after year i think he has like four a thousand yard seasons in his cfl career and i'm just really excited to see how he does in his second year in saskatchewan because he was really good in ottawa prior to coming to saskatchewan in 2019 but behind him they really don't have anybody else that's really carried the ball too much at the cfl level Jamal Moreau, he's a carryover from the 2019 practice roster for the Riders. Great pass catching running back while he was in college, so we'll see if they use him in that regard. Marcus Murphy, I know a bit because he played my Buffalo Bills a couple of years ago. Mostly a return guy, but he has that burst that may actually translate very well to the CFL. Might be one of those players that fits better in the CFL than he does in the NFL because he's more of a smaller framed guy but keep an eye on that return ability ralph webb is a guy that bounced around the nfl since going undrafted in 2018 but has never actually appeared in a regular season game so that's kind of a cause for concern but we'll see how he does in training camp keenan lafrance i know i just skipped over him but he's mostly a fullback type that is going to do his job as a national player in this backfield but not going to see a ton of carries for wide receivers, they're going to rank fifth. And the reason why they rank fifth, much like the quarterback position, is that it's extremely top heavy. You have Shaq Evans, who I've long said since I started this channel is arguably the best deep threat receiver in the CFL. I think in my mind, the top one of the top three receivers overall in the CFL, just because I value that deep threat ability, ability to make big plays, can do a lot of things in the other areas of the field and has extremely good chemistry with Cody Fajardo really like Shaq Evans game and I think he could have a massive season here in 2021. Kyron Moore is more of that slot shorter type really really speedy can contribute as a returner as well really good when using the waggle and they just used him very effectively in the 2019 offense so I'm really excited to see how he follows up on that in 2021. Jordan Williams Lambert is a guy that I don't know what to expect out of him in 2021 because in 2019 he comes in midway through the season after getting cut in the NFL comes back to the Riders where he was previously a very good player and didn't really make much of an impact despite some playing time so we'll see what happens with him but I think this team is going to have to rely on him to be a pretty crucial part of this passing game here in 2021. Carlos Henderson is a guy that made exactly one catch in 2019 after being signed by the Riders. So there's not much to go off of there when it comes to where he is going to be projected to be in this Riders offense in 2019. But the fact that he was on the roster previously may give him an edge because he's familiar with the coaching staff of the Riders. Paul McRoberts, He's been out of the NFL since 2017 when he was on the Rams active roster. So a guy that we really don't know, those guys that have been out of football, like think about Vince Young a few years ago when he came up here to the CFL after being out of the NFL for quite a while. So who knows how these guys are going to be, but something to keep an eye on there. Ricardo Lewis is a former Auburn Tiger who comes to the CFL at 27 years old. Hasn't really done anything elsewhere noteworthy outside of his college career. Uh, Sharon Peake, a guy from Clemson with 22 career NFL receptions across his time with the Jets from 2016 to 2018, but hasn't really done anything since, been mostly a practice roster guy. Uh, Xavier Obusi, big time deep threat when he was in college, but hasn't really done much at the pro level, and that's why he ends up here in the CFL. Kermit Whitfield, a former XFLer with Dallas and LA during the 2020 season. So a lot of these guys, just unproven guys that we don't know what to expect from this American side of this receiving core. For the Canadians in the receiving core, it's a mix of guys that have played maybe one or two CFL seasons and rookies, basically. Uh, Justin McInnes, I think he's the leader to be one of the starters in the receiving core to be maybe that lone Canadian that starts out receiver for the Riders. He was their first round pick in the 2019 CFL draft and actually made uh, double digit receptions as a rookie, was able to get on the field. So that was an encouraging sign. So I think he's the leader to be the starter there, but this is gonna be a hell of a competition. 
Jake Hardy is a guy that was out of the league since 2017 and he's attempting to come back. Mitchell Pickton was a 2017 draft pick of the Riders and hasn't really done much at the CFL level, but we'll see again if he can finally have this breakthrough in this offense. Braden Lenius is a guy that comes in for his second season now in 2021 after being a 2019 pick. Apparently he's lost a bunch of weight this offseason because previously he was more of the fullback tight end type, but now he's shed, I think it was like 30 pounds to be more of a traditional receiver. So we'll see how he fares again going into this season during training camp. It's gonna be very interesting to see who emerges as the starter out of this Canadian group here in the receiving core. And then maybe the dark horse is uh, this year's second round pick, Terrell Janna, who a lot of people thought was in contention for the number one pick in the 2021 CFL draft. Very fascinating prospect. A lot of people think he was the most complete receiver in the draft. One of the more complete receivers that we've had coming into the CFL in many years. So maybe, maybe he's the guy that ends up being the starter eventually at some point this season. Rookies are gonna kind of be at a little bit of disadvantage. It's gonna be a double rookie class because the 2020 draft hasn't played a single season in the league yet either. And that leads me to Keon Schaefer Baker. Fourth round pick, I think he was in the 2020 CFL draft. Really liked him coming out of Guelph. Big bodied guy, 6'4", I think. Showed a lot of promise as a deep threat while in college. So maybe he's a dark horse to see some playing time, but gonna be interesting to see if any of these guys get cut, who makes the roster, who gets the playing time. Very fascinating group. And then finally, you got Ben Scrutton, who's a global player that they brought in. On the offensive line, this is where I have the biggest concern for this team. Uh, and this really just stems from their offseason retirements that have happened recently. So Brendan Labatt is the guy that it's going to hurt a lot this unit because he was absolutely, without a doubt, the best offensive lineman on this team. Even though he's struggled with injuries over the past few years, his just overall ability, his versatility, he can play center, he can play guard, he can cover for a lot of different positions that this team needs in the event of an injury. And now they don't really have that guy, and that's that's concerning. And he's a five-time CFL All-Star, just an absolute stud, and they lose him, at least for this year. Apparently, he's going to be coming back in 2022, but... We'll see what happens with him. And then to a slightly lesser extent, the impact felt by the retirement of Tacoby Cofield, who was one of the projected starters. I had him projected as their starting right tackle this season. So it always hurts to lose a tackle because not all offensive linemen are capable of playing tackle. Big question going into the training camp here, who's gonna take that starting right tackle spot for the Riders? But with that said, let's go into the actual active players here for the Riders. So Teron Vaughn, he's going to be their left tackle. Very solid player. But your average stutter at, on the offensive line for a tackle position. So I like him. He's not the best offensive lineman in the world, but very, very sturdy. And uh, I trust him to be a solid starter for this team going into 2021. Dan Clark is this offensive line's best offensive lineman. Plays the center position, was just an absolute mauler as a run blocker in 2019. And really solid as a pass protector as well. Really like him. Evan Johnson, now he's the guy that they bring in from the free agent class. And really the retirements of Labatt and Cofield really make the Johnson signing seem even more important. Evan Johnson is a guy that he does have a little bit of capability of playing a little bit of tackle as well but he's mostly going to be a guard position and i guess a blessing in disguise is that with Flabat retiring johnson can now play his natural left guard position that he played in ottawa and did very well in 2019. beyond those three guys there's a bunch of question marks a bunch of interesting pieces that they brought in to compete here josiah st john former number one overall pick in the cfl draft Hasn't really worked out for him ever since he came out of Oklahoma, but he's still on a roster and you got to give him credit for him. He's still grinding away in the CFL. A lot of guys give up, you know, they don't see the financial rewards if they struggle early on in their career. So good on St. John for keep on going. And maybe, just maybe, this is his opportunity to break through with a lot of spots up for grabs here in the offensive line for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Brett Boyko, he caught a lot of flack 
during the 2019 season for his play with the BC Lions got absolutely exposed as a tackle coming up to the CFL after playing in the NFL for a while. We'll see what he does as a encore to that 2019 season here in 2021. I don't know if they view him as a tackle at this point. They might they might want to start a Canadian at tackle, but I really don't know if that's the best decision. Maybe he's better suited as a guard where they can kind of hide his flaws a little bit more. But because he has so much playing experience, I could see him for sure making this roster and seeing significant playing time for this team. Matlin Riley, a guy I'm really excited to see how he does. He was their first round pick in the 2020 draft, so last year's CFL draft. And because of these retirements, I could see him playing much earlier than maybe they originally planned. Uh, Cyrus Quanjo, a guy that I'm very familiar with, who was a second round pick of my Buffalo Bills, guy that came out of Alabama, had high expectations. A lot of people thought he was going to take it in the first round, fell to the second round. And I was pretty excited when we took him, but unfortunately the Bills kind of tried to play him at right tackle a little too much. And he ended up being more of a guard type and he just couldn't last in the NFL very long. And or maybe he's a tackle at the CFL level, but not the NFL level. But we'll see if he makes the roster here. Same with Sontrell Henderson, another former Bill. A couple of these guys on the roster here. Henderson looked really, really good his first couple seasons in the NFL. Really broke onto the scene as one of the uh, steals in his draft class after being, I think it was a seventh round pick. And he ended up starting his rookie season at right tackle and uh, earning that job right away. And it was really impressive. And then what really brought him down were his uh, injuries and he had Crohn's disease that really sunk his career in the NFL. And I'm really cheering for him. Uh, Jesse Lawson, a 2020 draft pick. Same with Logan Bandy, who they took this year. And Logan Ferlin was a guy that they acquired through the territorial draft process. So very, very interesting offensive line group for the Riders, but it has a lot of questions and that's why it ranks at eighth in the CFL. It just previously, if they had Labatt, they had Cofield, they probably would have been a top three unit, but having questions along the offensive line is very scary going into a season. So we'll see how they sort it out. I think they have enough strengths on this roster otherwise to be fine, but we'll see if this becomes a problem area for them this season. On the defensive line, they're going to rank fifth despite some high profile off season loss of uh, a certain player was really the heart and soul of this defense for the last few years arguably the best pass rusher in the league but people forget how good this unit was otherwise and I think people aren't giving them enough credit uh, they're kind of just writing this unit off but they have AC Leonard who is a very very strong pass rusher in his own right he's proven a lot at the CFL level was a double digit sack guy last season or in 2019 rather uh, Micah Johnson who at his best which for granted wasn't since 2018 he was the best defensive tackle in the CFL, and he proved it for a long time. In 2019, he had a down season when he came to Saskatchewan. Only had like a handful of sacks. Maybe his motor has slipped off a bit, but when he's engaged and motivated, he is a beast, and no team wants to face Micah Johnson on a weekly basis in the Canadian Football League. Freddie Bishop, a guy that had a double-digit sack season a couple of years ago, likely figures in as the other defensive end in this unit. McConaughey Henry, a Canadian defensive tackle, mostly going to be a run stuffer guy, but can provide a little bit of pass rush upside at times. Jarvel DeBuyer, a guy that seen a little bit of playing time in 2019, but we'll see how he does going into 2021 uh, as a guy that he really did flash some potential in those limited opportunities. So maybe he ends up overtaking Henry eventually in this defense. Who knows? Like some of these guys could take massive jumps with how much time they've had to train for this season, right? But there's not too much to say about these other guys. Jordan Reeves has been here for a few years. Sterling Shippey, he was a guy that's, he's been on the roster. I believe he was on the practice roster in 2019, but all these other guys, mostly just American free agent additions that I don't know too much about, couldn't gather too much about them. But this unit, I don't think a lot of people give them enough credit. I think they're a pretty good defensive line still, even without Charleston Hughes. Granted, if they had Charleston Hughes, they'd arguably be number one in the league, but I digress. At linebacker, again, they're going to rank fifth. A lot of fives on this list. It starts with Dion Lacey, who 
recently signed as a free agent a couple weeks ago really guy that comes back to the cfl has a ton of nfl experience from uh, his time he played with the bills he played with uh, the dolphins i believe uh, mostly a special teams guy in the nfl didn't really see too much time on the defensive side but at the cfl level previously he was a very good strong side linebacker and that really solved a lot of uh, questions that i had about this unit it allows that secondary basically to remain intact. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Larry Dean, who they bring over from Hamilton, just a really, really strong middle linebacking presence. He's gonna be that vocal leader for this team in the middle of the defense after they lose Solomon L. Mimian. So I thought that was a really good pickup. Jordan and Justin Herdman Reed, might as well talk about the twins together. One of them's probably gonna end up starting at some point. Jordan is the guy that has more playing time experience for this time from BC, but Justin has seen a good amount of playing time with Toronto as well. So excited to see those guys. The problem with Dean and the Herdman Reed brothers though, is that neither of those guys, none of those guys really excel in the coverage aspect of linebackers. So gotta be a question if, to see if those guys get played together at all, but we'll just have to see. Uh, Micah Tights is a guy that might factor in as well as a Canadian start in this linebacking core, maybe over the Herdman Reed brothers. I've seen that projected, but I think that one of the Herdman Reed brothers is gonna start over him. Olawasin Aduwu is a guy that was a holdover from 2019. We'll see if he ends up getting a first crack at playing time at the weak side linebacker position. They may change it up and not start a Canadian linebackers after losing Cameron Judge. Kevin Francis, a veteran special teams Canadian player, might make the roster, may not, depending on what their special team situation is. Uh, Deshaun Davis is a guy that was on the roster, I believe, last season. But, of course, we didn't have a season, and he's still going to be on the roster coming into the 2021 training camp. But anyway, that is the linebacking room, and I'm excited to see how this team reacts to losing Cameron Judge and Solomon L. Mimian in free agency and to retirement, respectively, over the past 12 months. Now, the real highlight for this defense is the defensive back room, which is going to rank first in the CFL. Nick Marshall is arguably the best corner in the CFL right now, arguably maybe the best DB. Yes, he's going to get beat sometimes, but sometimes he absolutely locks down the field. And the thing is, he's very effective at getting his hands in the passing lanes. Just a very, very effective corner for this group. But also when he gets takeaways, he's a threat to do something with him. And that's why he's one of the best defensive backs in the CFL. He may give up them, but he is a threat to score whenever he gets the ball in his hands and turns the ball the other way. So very excited to see Nick Marshall return to the field. Ed Ganey, a very veteran defensive back at the CFL level, played a ton of CFL games. Very little concern about him at that halfback position. He just is going to do his job. And he's a guy that's going to, you know, take his risks and he's going to come up with a handful of interceptions every year. That's just the way he plays the game. He had a 10 interception season a few years ago, one of the few CFL players in recent memory to have a double digit interception season. So keep an eye on Ganey as a veteran piece in this defense. And then you got Luchez Pirafoy, who is Quite honestly, one of my favorite players in the CFL. I just I think he's one of the most interesting players. I think they would have started him at strong side linebacker had they not signed Dion Lacey, but he still stays now at his regular halfback position. And he, he was super effective playing that in 2019. He's a very physical defensive back that has coverage ability as well. A very effective player that I trust in this defense. And then Mike Edom, that Canadian starting safety for this group, a guy that had a great season in 2019, and I think we can expect more of the same as he's really matured in his CFL career. Lorenzo Jerome got some playing time playing for the Calgary Stampeders in the back half of the 2019 season. Also saw some time as a punt returner, so watch out for that. We'll see how that translates to a potential roster spot for him on this 2021 Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Godfrey Onyeka, a guy that really rose among the Canadian defensive backs in the Edmonton system and ended up being a starter at some points during that season last time we saw the CFL play. Maybe if Mike Edom ever goes down to injury, they can still keep a Canadian starting and put Onyeka at corner. And 
that may actually help them a ton to have another quality Canadian defensive back in this unit. And then Blaze Brown, a guy that came in at the back half of the 2019 season, played two CFL games. We'll see if he gets a crack at one of these starting positions. And then Nelson Lacombo, their first round pick in this year's CFL draft, the number two overall pick in the draft. Now, Kenneth Acker is an interesting free agent addition here because he doesn't have any CFL experience, but has plenty of on-field NFL experience. He played with the 49ers and the Chiefs and has multiple career NFL interceptions. So we'll see how a guy that actually has relatively recent playing time and actually has a body of work on a professional field bears in training camp for this team. And I think he's one of those guys that can potentially step into one of these starting roles. Like one guy I didn't mention is LJ McCray. Mystery surrounding him because he was one of this team's starting corners in 2019, but now he is reportedly added to the suspended list, so I didn't put him on the screen here. So we'll see if he comes back to the team. The suspended list kind of confuses me. I'm just kind of biting on caution, just saying, I'm not going to put them on these videos, but LJ McRae, he's a pretty quality defensive back if he comes back to the Riders, but I think Kenneth Acker is a guy that could potentially end up uh, starting in the place of McRae in this lineup. But overall, an outstanding defensive back room for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, despite losing McRae, I still kept them at number one because I just have so much faith in those two veterans, Marshall and Ganey, Pierre Foy, a very quality player, Adam, another quality veteran, just have a lot of experience in this room and a lot of interesting options to fill that fifth starting role in this defense. Then special teams, they're also going to rank seconds. Now the reason for this is because they have quality players at kicker, punter, they have a long time long snapper, which for what it's worth, they have experience there. But they also have a lot of quality return options in this group. Kyron Moore handled most of the punt return duties for this unit in 2019. Uh, who knows if he continues to do that with him probably taking on more of a role as a receiver this year. Uh, Marcus Murphy, who we talked about in the running back room, has a lot of return experience for when he was in the NFL. Luchez Purifoy, amazing kick returner. Uh, I would expect he still handles that role this season. And then Lorenzo Jerome, a guy that has a little bit of punt return experience from Calgary last year. Now, with all that said, let's go in to the projected starters. There's some questions marks on this offense, but I think overall the star power will keep this team afloat. Cody Fajardo, William Powell, Shaq Evans, Kyron Moore, Dan Clark, Evan Johnson. Those are really your core guys. And then I think you still see Jordan Williams Lambert start because he has CFL experience and he's proven it in the past. Teron Vaughn, obviously gonna be your sturdy left tackle in this group. But outside of that, there are a lot of question marks about where players are gonna start in this offense, starting with Justin McInnes. Again, a big Canadian wide receiver battle. I do think they're going to start a Canadian at receiver this season, especially with all these injuries on the offensive line. They could end up starting only two offensive linemen that are Canadian. Keep an eye on that for the wide receiver position. Carlos Henderson, one of the American wide receiver spots. I, I could see that being a big competition and somebody winning that out of camp. We'll see. And then on the offensive line, I put Matlin Riley at the right guard spot. I wasn't really sure who to plug in right there, but the thinking here is Matlin Riley. They have all those retirements with Labatt and stuff. So, and Matlin Riley comes into his first training camp. He had that extra year to wait to come into the CFL and we'll see if he blows them away in training camp. And under that scenario, he ends up starting like I have it here. On the right tackle, I have Sontral Henderson. I think either him or Cyrus Quanjo is going to end up being that starter at right tackle. I don't see them going a Canadian route unless they go with Brett Boyko, but I really don't want them to go with Brett Boyko because, oh man, he was he was brutal as a tackle in, in 2019. There's a lot of questions with this offensive line going into this season, but I think Three of the five starters are pretty well set, and we'll have to see what happens with those other two positions. On defense, they're pretty interesting. You got the three core starters on the defensive line. There's not much to talk about there with A.C. Leonard, Michael Johnson, McConaughey Henry. But then Freddie Bishop is a guy that has a lot of CFL experience. He has the sack production in the past, but we'll see if he ends up capturing that job at a training camp coming over as a newcomer here. And then at the linebacking core, you got Larry Dean, Dion Lacey, pencil those ones in as starters. 
But then Jordan Herman Reed, like I've mentioned before, I don't know about the positional thing. Who's going to play weak side linebacker? Herman Reed's more of a middle linebacker, so we'll see how he fits in. But uh, I'm just going to throw that name right in there right now because I think it's going to be one of these Canadian guys, but it could be him, it could be Micah Tights, or it could be one of these other American linebackers that uh, played for the team in 2019. So very interesting linebacking group there. In the secondary, you got the four main starters, like I mentioned in the, the previous section. But then Kenneth Acker is my bold prediction for this unit that he's going to come in as a rookie and be the starter at corner and take that spot vacated by LJ McRae. Very fascinated to see how this unit works its way out. But there's really only one big question mark at every level of the defense. I think every other starter on this unit is pretty well set in stone. Now to the team award predictions. And I really like these predictions. These are the ones I feel the most confident about out of the three teams that I've talked about so far. Starting with the most outstanding player, this is the easy one. I'm going with Cody Fajardo. I think you could argue Shaq Evans as well at wide receiver, but I'm going with Cody Fajardo. I just think he's due for a big season. The team is going to rely on him a ton because this defense is probably going to have a little bit of a slight regression this season due to the loss and pass rush from losing Charleston Hughes. But I think this offense is still going to be very good and Fajardo is going to throw the ball a ton. Uh, and then most outstanding defensive player, I think Larry Dean's going to have a massive season. I think he's going to be just that leader in the middle of the defense, and he's really going to make a lot of people forget about at least Solomon Helm. I mean, and then most outstanding Canadian, I got Mike Adam. Very hard prediction here, but I'm going with Adam just because I think he's going to be playing the most, and I feel the most confident that he's going to put up a stat line that's favorable to being nominated for the award. For most outstanding offensive lineman, I'm going with Evan Johnson, their big offseason addition. I just really like Evan Johnson. I was really high on him when he was with the Ottawa Red Blacks. I cannot believe they let him walk out the door, but I guess he's from Saskatchewan, so that makes sense. But I think he's going to be great playing for the Riders. Has a little bit of versatility. Like I said, he can play a little bit of spot starter at right tackle or both guard positions. So fascinated to see, but I think he's going to be the guy that this team's going to really rely on. And for most outstanding rookie, I'm going to build on my bold prediction and go with Kenneth Acker, who I think is going to be the breakout guy of this defensive back unit. But that is just my prediction here. You never do know with rookies who's going to even get cut. He could get cut for all I know. But that is my prediction just based on how much of a pro resume that guy has. And finally, let's talk about my final thoughts about the Rough Riders going into 2021. So, so the key question for this team going into 2021 is, will the front seven be able to overcome off-season losses? So they lost Cameron Judge, Solomon L. Mimian, and Charleston Hughes, three of their key components of the 2019 defense. I don't know how they're going to deal with that. I don't think the defensive line is terrible or anything that's left over here but i think they're due for a slight regression from those positions and at the same time i think this defensive back room is fantastic so it's really going to be that old debate between what's more valuable pass rush or coverage we're going to see that experiment play out for this team and ironically there's another team in the cfl that i'll talk about later in this series that has uh i believe the exact opposite problem so we'll see how that works out for the riders going into this season and then my general prediction for this team going into this season is that there's going to be a slight regression from 2019 when they were the best team in the west they were explosive they went on a big winning streak after a slow start to the season but i still think this team is going to be a playoff team this year i just don't think that they have as much of a ceiling defensively and the questions along the offensive line do scare me a bit against some of these teams that we're going to see in the CFL, like in Edmonton, who has an absolutely dominant defensive line. So we'll see what happens in 2021 with the Riders. But I really do like them going into the future. I, if you look at my old power rankings video just from a few months ago, I did have them at number two. I just really like this unit despite their offseason losses. But we'll see how they fare going into this season. I'm just really excited to see it. And with that said, that is going to be the end of today's video, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to thank you all for watching. Once again, my name is Jason. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do it is by hitting that like button and subscribing to Aussie Saddle for more CFL content just like this. Also, be sure to let me know in the comment section what you think of the riders going into this season. 
And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.